Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, my friends. This is your Paul Phoenix starter guide for Tekken 8. So for this video, we're going to be covering all things Paul's, his important moves, some example combos, a lot of things in between. So there'll be timestamps for you to skip forward to, use whatever makes sense for you. But first, let's talk some just pros and cons of the character. And I guess the pros uh, can be pretty easy to figure out. Paul's an ignorant monster of a character in a lot of ways. You can play real stupid, real ignorant Paul to fantastic results. So one of the most cherished aspects of the character, in fact. However, you can also play super fundamentally sound Paul, like really solid Tekken Paul. And the beauty of this character is you can go from just, you know, super fundamentally sound played from whatever you want to ignorant gorilla the next second, no big deal. And you can switch on the fly from one to the other. So for people who want to play stupid, for people who want to play smart, and for people who want just a nice little taste of both, Paul is a great character for it. We'll talk about it more in the move section, but yeah, uh, fundamentally, Paul just kind of has like the easiest 50-50 in the game. The Death Fist, which does a lot of damage, or the Demo Man which also does a lot of damage. In fact, it's about the most damaging basic low you can think of. And also on top of that, it has a just frame version where you do more damage as well. So what's not to love? Paul, as of Tekken 8 as well, a uh, lot more ranged options to work with, which are all heat engagers as well, which is really handy considering uh, his raw heat mode activation is maybe the best in the game, hands down, which is pretty crazy. Strong pressure with all of his various backsway options and all the offense that can come from it. Uh, you know, he can also get tricky with backsway canceling. A decent amount of advantage frames off certain moves. Heck, should you even need it? He even has parries. Uh, not everyone has parries. He does have parries. And he can deal with a lot of highs and mids. So, okay. Overwhelming gorilla mode, mix up, all that kind of stuff. Sounds good, right? Solid fundamental moves. Decent screen control. All that sounds good. Silly... DF2, which we'll talk about in the zone section, sounds good. So what exactly are the weaknesses of Paul? Well, one of the big ones is like nothing really magic's happening at 10 frames. Uh, you know, the 10 frame punish is one of the core aspects of the game. And for Paul, it's basically just jabs. I guess you have uh, one, two, three. If uh, it's going to win you the game, only if it's going to win you the game, because 24 damage is a lot off a of jab punish, but it's also punishable on hit. Like, I, that, the opponent is not blocking. They're getting hit. Still negative 14 on hit. So, otherwise, you're just going, like, 1-2, right? So, at 10 frames, there's not a lot of magic happening. He has what he's specifically good at, which, you know, fair enough for a fighting game character, I guess. But other than that, that's kind of the thing. Though, thanks for, for Paul, what he's good at, hey, it's pretty good at to be good at the things he is good at. Paul's a classic Tekken character and maintains a lot of the classic moveset with some new things in this game. And that said here, I know move lists... Not everyone's favorite. They get really long. So we're going to talk about 10 specific core moves you should know for Paul above everything else. When you become a Paul Master, hey, you should know the whole move list, sure. But for now, let's start with 10 very core essential moves for the character. Okay, so move number one we have to talk about is Paul's infamous Death Fist. You, we, you have to start here. Like, there's no point in making this video if we don't start with Death Fist, right? So Death Fist, quarter circle forward, and two. And in this game specifically, it's a heat engager, and if you're in heat, it makes the move even better, right? So it's a big deal. Why is it a big deal? One, it hits like a truck. It hit real hard. Punch Man hit you real hard with punch. Sells itself. Also, the distance you travel when being hit, especially in heat, can be pretty far, as you can see by that wall splat. Paul being Paul, he'll just randomly do it and hope you are blocking, right? That's kind of just how it is. That's like been Paul since the start. And while indeed technically the move is punishable on block, it leaves you at an awkward enough distance that if you weren't immediately thinking about what like the exact right button to punish it is, depending on the character anyways, it can be a little awkward to punish sometimes. Especially if the move hits from like further away than the usual distance and sometimes you just can't punish it because that's just how the pushback works. And specifically in heat mode, it becomes negative 13 instead with more pushback and you actually just aren't going to punish it. It's just a big strong attack that comes out reasonably fast for what it is. It does a lot of damage. It puts you in heat engager mode and kind of leads to his other mix-up potential because it's a mid. And when you're worried about blocking this mid, you certainly are not blocking low. Let's put it that way, right? And we'll get to that in a minute. His ability to just kind of saunter in and approach and smash you is very good with this move. The range is very powerful. And once again, this move, buffed in heat mode, 
Like, look at that. Like, I was nowhere near the corner. That still splatted from very far away. That's sort of the power of this move in Heat is that you can scam people pretty good. You know, uh, about half your life for a random and Heat safe on block move from nowhere near the corner sounds good to me. So when people talk about Paul being a very silly character that can do very silly things, the Death Fist is one half of the equation. There's not a lot of science to it. There's not a lot of elegance or whatever. You just go full caveman and just start swinging. And that just kind of works. So that's the Death Fist. That's part one of the equation. Let's go to part two. Part two is the Demo Man. So Demo Man, whereas Death Fist is a mid, Demo Man is a low. And as far as lows go, uh, you might see many power lows kind of referred to as hell sweeps, all that kind of stuff. It does more damage than the vast majority of them. On top of the fact that also you have the regular version. And if your timing's perfect, you get the blue spark version where you just simply do more damage. So if you don't get it, you don't get it. You just lose a couple points of damage. But regardless, either way, the damage is there. Also, another very good move for splatting people off the wall. Either by itself or as a combo ender, uh, if you use this here, you can get some pretty fantastic results near the wall through a variety of means, right? So it's very good. Uh, the low itself is only 15 frames, absolutely unseeable low. So when Paul's like kind of beside you, you got to start guessing. Not the least of which, the crouch dash, which is sort of the giveaway of the Death Fist, you can absolutely do Demo Man out of the crouch dash. Like there's nothing stopping you from just doing it out of the crouch dash. So visually, there's just no way to tell when he's in your face which one's going to be which. Only negative I can attribute to this move is it needs what we call the clean hit property. You can see in our little uh, tab here in the bottom left where it says clean. So it basically means you just have to be close to the enemy. So if you start the string for Demo Man from far away and like only the tip of your feet connect, it will not trip the enemy. It has to be pretty much touching the enemy for the trip effect to happen. But otherwise than that, it just means you have to do it up close. Other than that, there's effectively no downside to this move. It is simply put one of the best lows in all of this game, hands down. Now, next up, I wanna talk about one move specifically. Uh, this move is up two. So up two is a heat engager, which is very important for Paul. We'll talk about more in the heat section, but heat engager gives free mix up and Paul's free mix up is a lot better than most, right? So. In and of itself, that's really good. Also, look at the absolute, just absurd range of this, right? From this far away, that connects. A 22 frame move, so, you know, not the fastest point blank, sure, but uh, it lets him just gain space just very easily with a heat engager attached to it, right? That's very good. Also, not only is it safe on block, it's plus on block and plus five and does chip damage. Plus five is a fairly substantial amount of plus to be. So uh, that's not nothing, especially because it leaves you at the exact right range to bully with say something like uh, down forward one and being plus five, that means no move they have could possibly beat it. And then from there, you just go into like all sorts of sway shenanigans, right? So just really good. The one weakness I could attribute to the move is simply the fact it's a high, but then again, you have forward one plus two, which is another good plus on block move that also forces crouching, which means in essence, it's even more plus than you think because it forces the crouching move set on them while they're getting up. So use them interchangeably, I guess. Also, forward one plus two is just a little bit faster, two frames faster, and it's a mid. So, I don't know, Paul's got good bully plus frames is what I'm trying to tell you here. So forward one plus two when they're a little closer, up two when they're a little further away. And if it connects, heat engager, you're one step closer to winning the game. Our next move is forward four. So this is the stone lion, which is just a really good name for a move. So we talked up to, has really good range, right? Heat engager, but it is linear. So if you know people are sidestepping out of range, you're not gonna connect, fair enough, right? Good thing this move also has a ton of range, is full circle tracking and is also a heat engager and is a mid to boot. So ain't no ducking this bad boy from a range. So when it comes to like the longer range offense, up two is really good heat engager, forward four is really good heat engager, right? and also completely safe on block. Now, point blank, negative eight, not great, but you should really not be doing this move from point blank. This is your full coverage move. I can literally just poke with this out of range. If it connects, it connects, great. Heat engager, mix up time. If not, at roughly this range, you know, negative eight, where all the jabs are gonna miss for the most part, except for maybe like Jack or something, uh, I'm not too broken up about it, right? Like I'm, get blocked, cool, I'm out. Just backdash or do whatever else you wanna do, right? 
Uh, just and fundamentally super sound poke mid, full circle tracking, no sidestepping this bad boy, heat engager on hit, just a really good poke, really good check of a button. Now, next up, we're gonna be talking his Sway Stance. So Sway Stance is gonna get its own section. There's a lot of good moves, but I do wanna highlight specifically one, which is Sway Stance 4. So Sway Stance 4, as you can see here, it is chip damage on block. It is a high, but it's a 15 frame high. That's pretty fast, it's pretty all right. And also is plus one on block. So plus one is not a lot to be plus by, but it does guarantee, you know, if we're just going for quick pokes, my jabs are gonna win out. On hit, it's a good knockdown. You can just kind of follow up and do your pressure, right? Respectable enough damage, 20 damage. And on counter hit, crumples. And considering you do this off your sway stance, you can do like a lot of baiting, all that kind of stuff, or just general, just like I'm back dashing off, sway, back dash sway. Did I catch you hitting a button? And if I caught you hitting a button, crumple, and then... Fair amount of damage off the counter hit, I think you would agree. It's a very low risk move to toss out. The only times it's gonna be bad for you is if you were just nowhere, like you didn't deserve to be hitting the button because you're nowhere near the enemy. Because otherwise it's just fish. You just do what you're gonna do, and if you see him hit a button, go for the swing, get that counter hit, you're gonna get a lot, a lot of damage. This is part of the Paul offense, where it's the fundamentally sound part versus like the gorilla part of his offense. Our next move, down forward one. I know it's not cool and sexy like Demo Man or Death Fist or whatever, but we need it, because it's just an important building block of his foundation. Why is that? 14 frame mid. It's all right, I guess, on hit. Barely negative on block, but uh, the secret here is specifically this move is cancelable into his backsway. Just hold back and he goes right into the backsway. And from there, all those cool backsway options immediately go onto the table. And there's some people out there who think they have this completely figured out, but the answer to that is you can cancel backsway into sidestep. Or frankly, you can cancel it into like literally any move. As long as you're quick enough, you can cancel this to very startup into anything else. So you're not just stuck to the backsway options, but down forward one backsway is at plus on block. That's kind of the magic of it right there. And if you do hit with it, great, all the better yet. But if it's blocked, it's at minimum plus three. So doing things like say down forward one backsway into backsway four, uh, if you're hitting a lot of the various buttons in the game, you're probably gonna get hit at that point. And as we already went over, the uh, counter hit, probably bad news bearer for the enemy. And there's the fact as well, it's his own natural hitting combo. So down forward one, one, natural combo by itself, 20 damage, it's all right. And you have down forward one, one, two, which is that guy right there. So for people who are worried too much about like down forward one to whatever sway and they're hitting whatever buttons or trying to do anything to get out of the way, this is a really good check against them. And down forward one, one by itself, not bad. And for the people that just mash too much and actually get hit by the third hit, it causes a very good splat and it does guarantee a death fist. The timing's a little tight, I'm not gonna lie to you, but if it's too tight for you, you can just dash forward, do uh, down one plus two and it'll, it'll hit, right? So do with it what you will, right? So it's a good anti-masher tool and a wide variety of reasons. One, just the mid poke part of it, two, the backsway part of it, two, the natural string part of it. So it's just a really core part of Paul's offense. Now, next up, let's talk as crouch dash three. So Demo Man's really good low, right? But it only really works point blank. And a lot of time you're not gonna be point blank, right? But we wanna work our way there. And that's exactly what this is. So you can work your way in with a crouch dash, hit three, good low. And by itself, it's all right. Like it does 17 damage, it's neutral on hit. So if you wanna keep anything uh, proper going, you're probably gonna go for jab offense after the fact. The magic here specifically is counter hit. If it hits on counter hit, comes a big old dunk on their head. And from that big old dunk on their head, Demo Man is guaranteed and you get a nice solid 50 plus damage. And because you're doing the crouch dash on your way in, people can see the crouch dash, you know, if you're not hitting the button immediately. And the immediate threat is always Death Fist, right? So a lot of times you can just kind of sneak it in because uh, the alternative for the enemy is a lot worse. Not much else to say than that. You need to work with lows. You can't always Demo Man. Like if you could, you would but you can't, right? You gotta work your way in every now and then. 
So this is the way you do it. You work your way in with the crouch dash. You hit three while you're crouch dashing and you get your nice little low. And if you happen to counter hit, well, then that's the party starter, isn't it? Now, next, let's talk Paul's down forward to the generic launcher. Paul's is a lot better than most of the casts. One, like it launches, as you'd expect. Two, it's completely safe on block. Negative eight, so you certainly lost your turn. But uh, for the majority of the cast, when theirs gets blocked, they get punished. Paul does not get punished. Also, due to the nature of how Paul makes the animation, there is also a small amount of evasiveness to the move. It's not a lot, a lot, but it's there. Like, say, as a center here, I hit her with 4421, and she jabs me back, and, you know, sure, I block it, whatever. But if I go for down 4 2 right after the fact, normally you can see before, like, she tagged me. Like, I'm getting hit, right? But just part of the animation, Paul just ducks very low to the ground and can evade certain highs. Like, it's not something you should always count on necessarily, but it's just there and you should know it. Yeah, not much else to say. It's a generic launcher. It's always good for any character that has it regardless, right? Uh, just his has just a little bit of evasiveness built into it, and it's also safe on block. So unlike a lot of the rest of the cast, if you do it, it gets blocked. It'll still suck, sure, but it's not a guaranteed, you know, little punish coming your way. So Paul's generic down 4-2, very, very good. Another very solid move for Paul is 4-4-2, just frame one. And I say just frame, but it's actually not that hard. Uh, the window is very relaxed for it. All you gotta do is just, after you hit two, you see it connect, hit one. Just don't mash it beforehand. So why is this solid? One, barely negative on blocks, negative four with pushback does chip damage. If you happen to be mildly near a wall, it's a guaranteed splat and also ledge break for the stages that have the ledges that break. If you're a little closer than very far away, well then you can just do whatever you want, really. Get some pretty good damage in, right? Uh, it's 15 frames as well, so it's not bad. This is another one of his just really good approach move. Uh, we've already talked about you know, mid-range. He's got a lot of good stuff. Just kind of add this one into the pile. And also, there's a lot of options from it. Like, the one weakness is the second hit, the just frame hit, is a high. So technically, they can duck it, but uh, it does come out fast enough after the initial hit that they have to like kind of anticipate it already to duck it. But then again, if they do, and you know they do, just hit one beforehand and get the other move, which is mid-mid. And also what helps here, mid-mid, by the way, is a natural combo as well. Uh, it is punishable on block a little bit. Light punish, not too bad. And basically, just kind of tailor-made to defeat if they think they're going to duck the high, you think they're going to duck the high. Otherwise, the high is almost always the superior option. Just once again, after the elbow, hit the button. If you hit the button before the elbow, then you get the mid-punch. And if you want to get silly and sassy, 4422, the second hit is a low. So if you're just looking to like knowledge check somebody, it's a pretty all right way to do it. Not the least of which, that low is a launcher. And if you want to get double extra sassy, you can cancel the low by holding back. And then he'll just kind of go into the crouching state and just do whatever from there. Really good for ending a lot of combos as well, because once again, the extreme distance that is traveled by the enemy on hit, and especially in like a middle of a juggle, they'll be higher up in the air, more prone to hitting the wall wherever they may be. And just really good solid move all around. Once again here, you know, from a range, uh, we talked, you know, up two, forward four, now four, four, two, one. Paul's got a lot of options from a decent amount of distance. It's not just always going to be Death Fist and uh, Demo Man up close. Paul's got some stuff. And the last of our 10 moves to talk about here is while standing one, two. So this is one of the new additions he has for Tekken 8. And you might notice it's not even a natural combo. So like, oh, that sucks, right? But the beauty is just like the down forward one, while standing one, two is sway cancelable. And on block, it becomes plus on block. So basically you can do all your sway shenanigans you could do from down forward one, just while crouching. And here's some good notes here. On counter hit, it does become a natural combo. Great. And also 36 damage is just not bad at all. So on counter hit, cool. Natural combo, plus two. But remember, anything that's backsway cancelable is more plus on backsway, right? So plus 14 if it hits as a counter hit on backsway. So it doesn't guarantee anything in and of itself. But it does mean they kind of just got a groove on whatever's coming next. And you get to decide. Now here's the other fun thing. So once again here, this is not a natural combo. So you can just kind of do the first hit if you want to as well. And if they hit buttons at all, or if you whiff the first button or whatever, and the second hit by itself hits this counter hit, 
then that into backstory cancels plus 15. So for people who mash buttons or whatever, and like they're getting uh, blocking the first hit, but mashing it through and getting counter hit by the second hit, this becomes a real problem because now certain moves off backsway do become natural combos. Not the least of which is backsway two, which is also a heat engager. So yeah, like it's just really strong offense in and of itself. Also good range for what it is. And since Paul can now go into his uh, old gimmicky hold down, like super crouch state, right? He can do that off his uh, crouch dash, just hold down forward. That means you can gain a lot of space and then do while standing one, two from like, almost like, you know, like a Mishima wave dash or something, right? So he can slide across the screen and do this. So that's actually very powerful. It gives him a very good tool just to rush in and attack with. So while standing one, two gives him good access to his sway offense. On counter hit is a natural combo, then leads the sway offense to being much stronger because you're plus 14. If the second hit specifically hits as a counter hit, it guarantees moves out of the back sway. And due to his new movement changes with the crouch dash, it just gives you strong mid based offense because they're both mid hits. So just really solid addition to the character in the game. Now let's talk Paul and heat mode. Heat mode's important for literally every character in the game. But for Paul, I think it's just a little bit more important than most, especially on how you'd want to get into heat mode. But first, let's just tell you some of the benefits you get. So in heat mode, uh, various moves, like say down one, two, back two, one, they have held components to them. And if you hold them in heat mode, the held component becomes a true guard break. So normally, yeah, you'll take some chip damage. And uh, if you just kind of deer and headlights it, then you'll just get pushed back, right? And a little bit of plus frames for Paul. And uh, you can actually sidestep it or whatever, but if you hit it in heat mode, instead of pushing back with chip, it just becomes a guard break and pushes back much less. And a guard break at plus 12. And at plus 12 frames, that means Paul, well, Paul gets some guaranteed damage in there. You can either go for, say, like a back one, two, or he can go for his down one plus two shoulder check. Either way, it's all guaranteed. That's sort of the magic of a guard break, right? And much the same here, back to one, you hold it all the way, guard break plus 12. And at plus 12, you get those same options. You know, we can go for your shoulder check or back one, two, whatever, right? So it can lead to guard breaks and therefore guaranteed damage, very handy. Naturally enough, you get access to your heat smash. Everyone's got their heat smash. And like, you may think, well, isn't Paul's just demo man? And well, yeah, but, yeah, but. So demo man, it can also do 40 damage, right? If you do the just frame version, otherwise you do 38. But there's a couple key things. One, Demo Man, if you get blocked, you die. <laughs> that kick is negative 31, y'all. You're not surviving that, right? Uh, versus the Heat Smash version. You get all the hits, and it's negative 12. So yeah, you might need like a jab combo or something, but certainly not, you know, launcher into death, right? So much safer on block, much uh, less risk involved. And also Demo Man needs a clean hit. So if you're from, you know, further away, like sure you might hit the down four, but like you're not landing the combo. Like that's not happening, right? If any part of the heat smash connects, it does not need anything like the clean hit. So if any part of that foot connects, the whole launch happens. So you can be much further away and it'll all work out in your favor. So it just makes his general mix much stronger. So it's literally just better Demo Man. And Demo Man's a pretty damn good move. So better Demo Man, also a pretty damn good move. While you are in heat, also your various Death Fist related moves, be it the actual Death Fist itself, uh, be it say the Death Fist attached to one of his command grabs, because it still counts as a Death Fist, right? They just all do more damage across the board and are just better across the board. And as for Death Fist itself, the proper crouch dash death fist uh, becomes effectively completely safe on block with a lot of pushback and insane, absolutely absurd corner travel. Like, look at this, right? I can't even see the wall on the screen, but you better believe that is a wall hit. Like, if, <laughs> like you will almost teleport them to the wall. So we're here mid screen, right? We're re restarting we're absolutely as mid screen as mid screen can get. I want to show you Heat Engager in the Death Fish, and I want to show you just how much space has traveled. All right, Engager, Death Fist, in the corner immediately from mid-screen. It just flings you as far back as you're allowed to be without the camera 
going any further back. Like it'll literally put you maximum distance to the camera wherever you are. And if the maximum camera distance allows for a wall splat, you will get a wall splat. Like I can't stress enough how absurd Death Fist is in heat mode. Cause it's gonna be a wall splat every time. And if you get that wall splat, it is all the way game over. You better believe it. You better believe it's all the way game over, even from that far away. And this is where a little bit of a heat mode philosophy should come into play with Paul. Cause a lot of people, you know, you just do the heat burst, enter it, whatever. And you get, you know, some plus frames, some baby plus frames, but nothing like the actual heat engager. And Paul has so many good heat engager moves, like up two, forward four, death fist itself, right? And when you're doing uh, the actual heat engager versus just raw entering and heat burst, obviously you get more heat bar to play with, but the plus frames are so much better. Like, would you rather be like plus one or two, uh, plus two on hit, plus one on block, right? Or would you rather be plus 17 and whatever's next is guaranteed? Plus 17, you just do crouch dash right in front of their face and it's immediately guess death fist or immediately guess demo man. And there's nothing they can do other than they hope they guess right. So the ignorant mix up part of Paul is at its absolute strongest if you hit the heat engager, especially cause you obviously travel quite a bit more space. Oh, we already talked the death fist, but demo man is no slouch at getting people on the wall from a range, right? Like you will get just as much of a big wall combo. So it's just extra terrifying for the enemy. And now, especially because your options are a lot safer, uh, you're sort of weighted towards Death Fist in heat because you'll do more damage. It's also safer on block. So, and because it comes to heavier, the two options, therefore you're more likely to get Demo Man off, right? So if you're just playing mix up Paul, like going for the heat engager, fishing for the heat engager is much more important than just doing burst into like whatever generic heat pressure. Because the mix-up you get from it is exactly the whole mix-up you're looking for the entire game. You want to be directly in their face, make them guess Demo Man or make them guess Death Fist. That's exactly what the Heat Engager offers you. And considering it's on so many of his prominent, really good moves, that should be what you should be fishing for. So Heat Mode and Paul is a pretty good mix together. Now let's talk Paul and the throw game. So Paul's throw game is definitely better than average. Not quite king or anything, but hey, nobody else is. He utilizes all three throw breaks and all three throws are pretty all right. So for a good one break, he can either do back one plus four and if done while your back's to the wall, we'll knock him up against the wall and you just get just a little bit of bonus damage. Handy. He also has down forward one and I know by itself doesn't look like much because there's a follow up here. So if you just do cortical forward two, death fist motion, he'll do a death fist and you may notice there's a blue spark there. So uh, there's a timing element to it so if your timing's off, you still get the move. You just do a little bit less damage. You get 37, which is still above average for a throw. Not by much, but still. And if you do perfect timing, then you do 42. Uh, and specifically, the timing is just do the motion fast and hit two roughly when it would connect against the enemy. That's kind of the visual tell. Like when the uh, initial punch right there connects is roughly when you want to hit two. And if you do it right, get the blue spark version. And also, this splats against the wall as well, making it very strong against the wall. Not a bad amount of damage for a throw, I would say. Our two break is the, actually just the generic two plus four, but instead of letting it rock, just hit two plus four, then hit back and it changes it to a palm strike and becomes an actual two break instead of one or two break like the generic throw would be. What's interesting about this is it changes the angle heavily. Like it throws the enemy heavily to Paul's right from whenever he would initiate the move. So if like you're near the wall and we'll throw them in the wall, unless you're throwing them into the wall from Paul's right, at which point you're spiking them directly into the wall and getting a little bit extra damage. He also has two one plus two breaks. So sort of the generic up forward one plus two. It's a big old punch to the face. And on stages with ground breaks, this will be a ground break. So it's handy to have. And he has forward forward one plus two, which will just throw the enemy across the screen. And uh, just like the others, if you're near the wall, big old wall splat. 
So Paul, his throw game is like just extra dangerous off the wall. He just gets a lot more off it than a lot of the rest of the cast would. So he gets all three breaks and kind of really above average wall benefits with his throws. Paul also keeps the ultimate tackle. So just while you're crouching one plus two on the ground, this used to be a universal mechanic, not so much anymore. Only a handful of characters can do it. So just it being there is a bonus. Also, it is near impossible to break the initial tackle. Uh, most throws have like a 20 frame break window. Tackle has like a six frame break window. So it's certainly not impossible, but it is unlikely you will break the initial tackle. So just keep that in mind. And from there, you know, he kind of just smash punches, all that kind of stuff, all the usual. You have arm breaks as well. Paul does have a unique chain of two down one, one, one plus two. And this does a fair amount of damage, 50 damage. So we don't want to get caught by that. But yeah, in a game where ultimate tackle is like just actually a very rare occurrence now, just having it is another benefit to him. So yeah, above average throw game all in all, it's really all to be said. Just a note, uh, if the enemy texts your throws, if you're against the wall or the enemy's against the wall, the down forward one into a uh, death fist throw break is like a nothing throw break. It's no big deal. But but the forward forward one plus two one, it's uh, not as good for you. You can switch sides. And if you're like directly even with the wall, <laughs> you're the one that gets splatted. So watch out for that. Uh, that means that uh, down forward one plus uh, three is a little bit more valuable in that way. But just keep in mind, I guess. But yeah, Paul's throw game is really good. Now, let's just talk the back sway. It's a very important part of the character. It's very simple to do. Just quarters go back, right? And from here, you get many powerful moves. So some of them we already talked about in earlier sections. Like back sway four, very strong full circle tracking. Death on counter hit. Really good. Some of the other things, stuff like... Backsway one, right? So backsway one on its face, it just kind of splats the enemy. And if it connects on block, it's completely neutral on block and does chip damage. It does force crouch on block, which means the enemy has to do their crouching move set if they hit buttons right away. So it's actually better than zero, I would say, on block, because then their fastest move comes like while standing four instead of like a 10 frame jab. It's just a good tool to keep people honest. It is a mid, unlike say backsway four, so can't duck it. And just like Backsway 4, connects on counter hit, big bounce. So you're probably some kind of dead if this connects is what I'm trying to say. Because this will hurt very badly if it connects as a counter hit. Backsway 2 is a mid striker. It is a heat engager, as we're going to talk about in the heat section. Uh, heat engager is more important for Paul than the average character, I would say. Also handy in that it's safe on block. It's negative 9. But it's negative nine with a decent amount of pushback. Like from this distance, jabs can whiff. So you can kind of safely just backdash out of the way, right? Whatever works for you. And although situations will be rare, it can also natural combo from say wall standing one, two, if the second hits a counter hit. And since wall standing one, two is one of the ways you can naturally transition to back sway, like down forward one, just hold back, very handy. Back sway three, just kind of a low. Just to, uh, you know, keep you honest, kind of low. It is pretty negative on hit. There's going to be some pushback, so you're not exactly going to get jab punished, despite what it says. Uh, although, on block, you're definitely getting punished there. Now, Backsway 3 has multiple follow-ups. So, you can go low, mid, high, or you can go low, mid, mid. So, a little bit of a can mix up there. So you can always freely go into the mid, right? So you can go back sway three, two. That part's always guaranteed. And on which part, since the high is completely safe on block, if they block that high, then you're out of jail. Like, don't worry about anything, right? That's great. But they could duck the high and punish you. And then if they duck the high, then you go for the back three, two, three. And that big old stomp is a mid and it'll crush any attempt to duck the high. So a little bit of a can mix up in and of itself. Also, if they're specifically mashing, like trying to uh, make you not do the safe high, then uh, the stomp, so backsway three, two, three, has a very nasty counter hit tied to it. Big old ground bounce. And we already showed you what you can do with big ground bounces, right? So if they try to mash out of the safe high, they're probably dead. Also, backsway one plus two, very long range. Uh, kind of the go-to whiff punish in a lot of ways if you are more brave. 
because it launches without any need for counter hit or anything like that, right? Unlike, say, Baxway 4 or Baxway 1 that needs counter hits. However, those are either safe or plus on block. Baxway 1 plus 2, uh, decidedly negative 14, not as much. So if you can visually confirm the whiff, sure, go for it. But if not, just be safe. Go for Baxway 1 or 4. If you get the counter hit, you get the counter hit. It'll be very apparent if you do. That's kind of Baxway in a nutshell. Also, it just gains you space backwards, right? Uh, you can't block while backswing like you can with a regular backdash, right? So that is something, but it's a way to create space while also having very powerful attacks built into it. And considering uh, very core moves like down forward one while standing one two naturally transition into it and make those moves advantage on block while doing so, giving you that part of the offense, it's just a very core part of what Paul is. And keep in mind, the backsway, you're not married to the backsway. You can sidestep out of it and do whatever you want from there. So you can like sidestep three or something. Sidestep three is a very good low, by the way. You can cancel the start of the backsway into any other move. So like say uh, forward four, which is a full circle mid. So if they're trying to do like stuff like sidestep down forward, low parry, trying to OS all your options, that blows that up really easily. So like while it has very strong options in and of itself, just doing it by itself does not mean you are committed to it in any way. Like I could do down forward one backsway and cancel the start of my backsway into my launcher or cancel the start of it into, uh, you know, forward three or like my hop kicks or even go for like a throw. Like I can do anything I want. So uh, the backsway is good, but it's just the start of your offense. You can do so many more things because you can also freely cancel the backsway into basically anything else. So super powerful tool for Paul. Uh, once again, down forward one while standing one two, really good ways to transition into it and just lots of reward for you. Next up, let's just talk crouch dash. So we talk backsway, crouch dash, same thing, just different motion, right? So instead of quarter circle back, quarter circle forward. And from here, we also have the new deep dive where if you hold down forward while doing it, he'll go even lower to the ground and gain access to either wall standing moves if you don't cancel anything or its own unique move set. So crouch dash two, bleh, death fist, most important thing. We, we've hammered that home hopefully in the video, but there's a lot of other good things. Crouch dash one, important for a lot of combo structures. Also by itself, does a little chip damage, completely safe on block. It is a high, so it's duckable, unlike Death Fist, but uh, is a natural launch. You don't need anything special. And once again, like so many other things we talked about in this video, yo, if you get hit, you're dead, right? So pretty good. Natural launcher, really handy to have, especially when it's completely safe. We have Crouch Dash 3, which we also talked about in the top 10 move section on counter hit it is a kind of splat and you get a guaranteed demo man from there with some good damage now there is no crouch dash four it just gives you wall standing four but you know solid mid like it's actually just a good button keeps people honest so that's not bad in and of itself but we also have other things like crouch dash one plus two which is a super power low does 20 damage by itself and as you can see here big spin out state it does use your tornado so uh you can't do quite as long of a combo as you otherwise would on like a more generic launcher. But like, you'll get your stuff in, like you'll figure stuff out, you'll get your damage, don't worry. And we also have Crouch Dash 3 plus four, which is actually another amazing move. So it's a big old knee and by itself, if it connects, uh, you can see like kind of the leg up stance when they hit the ground, right? So this does guarantee a death fest. The timing can be a little tight. So if you just want like dash forward down once plus two, don't feel bad about it. It's less damage, but it's much more reliable. And the thing about this is specifically, it is safe on block. It's negative nine. So it's like danger zone, right? You definitely lost your turn, but no guaranteed punish. And since you can do it from the crouch dash, if you're too scared to commit to the death fist in and of itself, it is safe. It's also quite a bit slower, you know, 13 frames versus 19, but uh, it is another mid option for you. And if they're worried about, uh, you know, demo man or something, cause you can do demo man out of the crouch dash then it's just an option that's mid. It'll hit them while they're crouching. Also, like so many moves for Paul, if you do it as a counter hit, much more advantageous launch. He uses your tornado, but don't sweat it. You're still getting your damage in. It'll still work out just fine, right? So yeah, a lot of good options just out of the raw crouch dash. Now the new step out of crouch dash where you hold down forward. If you do nothing and then hit buttons, you'll get the while standing version of moves. 
So you can like back off and get like a far range while standing one too, which is one of his better moves. So that's really good. But it also does have some of its own fixed moves. Like if you keep holding down forward, something like two one, natural hitting combo, 45 damage, mid high. And also completely safe on block with insane pushback. So if you're just looking for like a high powered mid option, this is not a bad way to go. And naturally enough, second part's a high, so you can duck it. But we also have here, while you're doing the double dash here, two, three, which is the big old mid stomp. And like you may have seen earlier in the video, bounces on counter hit. So if they duck or attempt to duck rather the high coming and they start like, you know, doing wall standing two or whatever, stomp will counter hit him out of it. Big old launch. We also have double dash here to hold down forward four. It frankly sucks. It is just there to keep people honest. So, you know, if they're trying to block the mids, because with all the wall standing stuff or holding buttons or whatever, you get a lot of options, right? So if they just see double dash, they immediately just stand block to get the mids. This is like, no, nah, you got to pay attention every now and then. Otherwise it sucks, but it's just there to keep the mix options on the table. And if you hold down forward three plus four, you do the big stupid kick, the big stupid somersault. This is uh, the best disrespectful way to end a round because Paul cannot do somersaults good. He's got to be like in his fifties by now, right? Like he's been around since Tekken one. So Paul is like either gonna be late forties or early fifties. He don't flip so good no more. Let's put it that way. He just kind of lands on his face. So crouch dash is always good. The options from it have always been spectacular and adding the new off stance, like grandfathering it into the crouch dash by hitting down forward when you're already crouch dashing and giving you either kind of instant wall standing moves or some of the moves in and of itself out of the uh, stance, new stuff, just very good across the board. Powerful tool for Paul for sure. So now let's talk combo structure for Paul and we'll also talk a wall carry, wall combos. And in the next section after this, we'll just give you a bunch of rapid fire, quick combos that aren't just in the basic BNB structure. So let's start down for two, the universal launcher. And for Paul, much better than most as has a little evasiveness and it's completely safe on block. So we're gonna be using that, right? And I'm gonna give you two combos back to back. One is the quote unquote optimal combo, which is very difficult. I'm not gonna lie. And the other one is dirty easy. It's basically the same anyways and only does a couple points less damage. So let's start with that. So there you go, mostly the same combo, three points of damage is the difference. The second one is trivial, it's so easy, like no stress. The first one though with the quarter circle forward one, that's gonna trick most of y'all up because the timing on that is not forgiving. So normally Tekken has a very generous buffer, like you can pre-input things and they'll come out when they're ready to come out. Quarter circle forward, the crouch dash, you cannot buffer any part of that. You can only do that when Paul is completely returned to neutral completely recovered from the down forward too. If you try to do it timing you think would work, you're probably just gonna get stand jab because you cannot enter it early at all. You have to wait for the enemy to have like mostly fallen down to the ground. And then that kind of leads to the problem is you're probably gonna whiff. So the only thing, there's no secret sauce here. The only thing is you have to input the quarter forward as fast as you possibly can and then hit the one as fast as you possibly can after the fact, after they've already fallen most of the way. Too early. You're gonna get that stand jab and too late, you're gonna whiff completely drop the combo. That's why the other one is much better most of the time because yes, a couple less points of damage, but is so easy to do. You'll never worry about dropping that one versus this one. If you wanna be truly optimal, you're gonna to have to grind and learn the timing. Once again, the sweet spot, you gotta let him fall for a bit and then do quarter circle forward and hit one as fast as you possibly can. If you do it correctly, that's how it'll look, right? Uh, you're gonna have to practice it. Like, there's no easy way out. But then again, don't feel bad if you take the easier version of the combo. Like, honestly, if I'm playing, I'm gonna do the easier version of the combo. I'm not gonna sweat a few points of damage versus dropping in the combo completely. 
you know, when you get your launcher, that's a big hooray moment. So you should take what you can get when you can get it. Like, if you want to practice it, by all means, you just, you gotta learn the timing. The window to actually connect is so small. Now that said, let's go to a stage, you know, that's not super wide open. Let's talk wall theory, both how to get people to the wall and what to do once you got them on the wall. Now, thankfully, wall theory for Paul is pretty easy. You're not gonna have to stress this too much. You can just do your basic combo. And that already inherently has a lot of wall carry to it. So from there, what we do once we get near the wall? Well, quarter circle forward one is not too bad. It'll carry them up pretty high, usually leave them high up on the wall unless they're literally touching the wall. And then you can kind of follow up with your standard wall combo. If they're on the wall already, uh, usually you want to go for either three, two, and then down one plus two, or you can do three, two, back sway two, which is easier, honestly. It does like, I don't know, like two points less of damage. It's not a big deal. Use whatever one works for you, or you can just jab them into death fist. So to give an idea of what our alternate enders would look like here, same deal, core circle forward one. We'll set a record point here. So three, two, down plus one, combo will do 82. Three, two, back sway, two, and it'll do 80. And once again, it's just easier. So whatever one works for you. You can do a raw death fist if you want. I'll only do that if they're kind of far away. If you can't get literally anything else. If you're at a weird angle, down forward, one, four, two also works. You just kind of keep them level. Like you have a lot of options to work with basically, but three, two is kind of the gold standard in most situations. Say we're a little further out, we can still pretty easily get people on the wall. It's not that big of a deal. We're still doing the same core combo structure. We don't need a heat burst or anything like that. Just do four, four, two, one, boom, wall splat. Now you're a bit further away, admittedly. Plenty of time though to give them the old love tap with the death fist, right? So if you can hit them like on the wall at all with four, four, two, one, Death Fist is pretty much guaranteed. Sometimes the timing will be pretty tight. Just make sure to run a lot first before you go into Death Fist just to gain the space. But yeah, even at you know pretty far ranges, like this is definitely well beyond mid screen. Paul can still wall splat you and get some guaranteed wall combo damage. Now, what if we're already pretty close to the wall? Well, Paul's pretty good at this part of the game. How about a demo man? That's a wall splat. And when you get a just good clean wall splat from a good distance and you can do a wave dash, you want to do wave dash three plus four or do back one, two or down back two. It all kind of depends at the distance of the wall. So like this specific distance right here, since we're a little further from the wall, back one, two is the answer. And then it'll give us our tornado. And, but since we hit them quite a bit already, stuff like the three, two into the Shoulder, not so much. So this is where we're going to use jab into death fist. And there we go. Still very respectable damage, right? Because death fist sits so low to the ground, it's getting uh, most of the scaling removed. So it still did 22 damage. It's a lot. So certain moves have different properties when they hit the wall. So here, like demo man, when they slide down, they slide backwards, right? If we have something like say our charged up death fist, they'll slide forwards and then Things get really crazy. And as we talked about earlier in the video, like this can splat you on the wall from like half the screen away. It's absolutely ridiculous, right? So now let them fall just a little bit and quarter forward one to put them up on the wall. And then we're gonna do crouch dash three plus four to tornado them even higher up the wall. Now see that they're higher up than they normally would be, right? And then we can get completely different combo set from that. So, yeah, I think you're picking up what I'm putting down here, right? Remember, I keep telling you how strong Paul is in heat mode. So random death fist, even mildly near the corner can be over 100 damage. We're doing the shoulder check into death fist because um, the quarter forward one has them high up on the wall. And then the quarter forward one, uh, rather three plus four, puts them up even higher, gives us the opportunity to do that. Normally that wouldn't work. But yeah, so Paul corner, it's very easy to get up into the corner. Once they're near the corner, quarter circle forward one, put them on the wall, or uh, four, four, two, uh, one, just frame if you want to get them near the wall when you're nowhere near the wall, or just do 
heat mode death fists and they'll figure it out. And of course, regular demo man can lead you to a bunch of perfectly fine options. Like 70 near corner, not, nothing to sneeze at, right? So Paul can do a lot near the corner, in the corner, far away, like anything with the corner, Paul works really good. So hopefully that helps you understand that. You now know the basic launcher BNB, you know how to get to the wall, you know what to do once you're at the wall. So let's cover everything else. And that's sort of Paul in a nutshell. At the base, there's the obnoxious uh, mix-up, Death Fist, or Demo Man, right? And of course, you have a lot more mids. You got plenty more mids to work with. Uh, power mids, too, as well. And you got more lows to work with, like a uh, back four. You know, it's not as cool as Demo Man, but you're going to use it. Also, on counter hit, it does guarantee a mix-up. It's plus 17, so you can just crouch dash right after the fact. And then make them guess Demo Man or uh, <laughs> Death Fist, right? So that works, too. And other lows, score to score forward three, you know, a lot of good range up to forward four, 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 two, one. Like he's just super solid kind of all around. Take that with a uh, good damage, good wall carry, above average throw game. Paul's just solid. He's always been, you know, one of the stalwarts of Tekken. And I think the Tekken 8 version of Paul is a pretty damn good version of Paul. So either if you want to play completely stupid or if you want to play very scientifically smart, or you want a good mix of the both, Paul is a great character for exactly that. It's got a lot of other fun traits too. Like I can't remember if I mentioned it at the, the beginning, but if I didn't, stuff like back three is a 14 frame crumple. That's like literally uh, means he can punish into full combo better than the majority of the cast because he does not have to wait for the 15 framer. You can kind of just go for broke immediately, right? So anything that's negative 14 against Paul is actually extra deadly because he'll get a full combo. Maybe not as damaging as down 4 2, but still 60 plus, right? So that's really good. But yeah, Paul's just really, really solid. Like you cannot possibly go wrong with Paul. That's what I'm trying to say. Paul does a lot. And like the few weaknesses he truly has, like his 10 frame punish is bad, I guess. Like it's certainly nothing to write home about. Like it sucks, but it's not like a critical weakness. In most areas of the game, Paul is pretty all right. So if all that sounds good to you and you enjoyed this video so far, Paul might be a character you might want to try out. And other than that, we are definitely at the end of the video now. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Tekken.